Assalamu alaikum. This is Dr. Hasna and today we will discuss about the palm, its special features and the intrinsic muscles of the hand in the palm. So first of all we should know that this part, the anterior part of the hand is known as palm while the posterior part is known as the dorsum. In the anterior part it, there is skin, below the skin there is the superficial fascia and then the deep fascia and then come the muscle and the bone. So the first part is the skin. The skin of the palm is creased. This increases the grip of the palm. All these special features increase grip of the palm. Then we have the superficial fascia of the palm. The superficial fascia of the palm is basically connecting the skin to the deep fascia. So if this is the skin, this is the deep fascia. The superficial fascia is like bands connecting the skin and the deep fascia to each other. These bands basically causes compartmentalizing of the fatty tissue between them. So small, very small and tight compartments of fat are formed in the superficial fascia. This tight compartmentalization of the fatty tissue is so that firm gripping is possible. So what is firm gripping? Gripping means holding something and firm means strongly holding something. So in these gripping movements, the, the fatty tissue that is compartmentalized acts as a water cushion. Then let's talk about the deep fascia of the palm. Now this is an important part because the deep fascia of the palm is modified in the palm on the various areas in the form of number one, the flexor retinaculum at the wrist or in front of the carpal bones. Then we have the palmar aponeurosis right in front of the palm. And finally, the fibrous flexor sheath of the fingers is the third modification of the deep fascia. So let's begin with talking about the flexor retinaculum. These are the carpal bones. The flexor retinaculum is a strong fibrous band which bridges the concavity of the carpal bones. This bridging causes formation of a carpal tunnel. So between the flexor retinaculum and the carpal bone, the area just between them is called the carpal tunnel. The flexor retinaculum medially is attached to the hamid and the pisiform bones. And laterally it is attached to the trapezium and the scaphoid bones. And then the flexor retinaculum consists of a lateral slip which is deep and a medial slip which is superficial. So let's suppose if this is the flexor retinaculum, there is a lateral deep slip which is basically attached to the trapezium bone and the, the point of this slip is to give way between the flexor retinaculum and the slip to the tendon of flexor carpi radialis. Moreover, there is a medial slip which is superficial and this is attached to the pisiform bone and just deep to this superficial slip are the ulnar vessels and nerve which pass deep to the superficial slip. The most important part about the flexor retinaculum are the structures that pass superficial and deep to it. So what are the structures that pass superficial to the flexor retinaculum which is important question. Uh, the first structure that passes superficially is the one that I just mentioned beneath the superficial slip, the ulnar vessels and the ulnar nerve. These are superficial structures. And secondly, the tendon of palmaris longus. Apart from this, there is the palmar cutaneous branch of the ulnar nerve and the palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve. Moving on, what are the structures that pass deep to the retinaculum? So very importantly, the nerve of the hand is the median nerve, which is a very important structure involved in passing through carpal tunnel. As in the future, we'll talk about the carpal tunnel syndrome and it is related to the median nerve. Moving on, long flexor tendons. These are the flexor digitorum profundus, flexor digitorum superficialis also pass deep. Apart from this, the ulnar bursa and the radial bursa pass deep to it. And finally, the tendon of flexor pollicis longus and the flexor carpi radialis pass deep to the carpal tunnel or deep to the flexor retinaculum. Moving on, let's talk about the palmar aponeurosis. So what is the palmar aponeurosis? So if this is the hand, we are talking about the palm of the hand. The palmar aponeurosis is a triangular thick connective tissue. Basically, the central part of the deep fascia of the palm, which is thickened and is triangular in shape. The apex of the triangle is basically merged with the flexor retinaculum at the wrist and the base is directed towards the fingers or the digits. 
the base is basically divided into a superficial stratum and a deep strata. The superficial strata basically merges with the dermis of the skin. What is the dermis of the skin? It is a layer of the skin. And the deep strata are divided into four, four parts. And these four parts of the base of the palmar epineurosis, these are continuous with the fibrous flexor sheath of the fingers. What is the function of palmar epineurosis? Is basically that it fixes the skin of the palm and it improves the grip of the hand. It also protects the underlying tendons and vessels and nerves. So an important clinical related to the palmar epineurosis is usually there is inflammation of the ulnar side of the palmar epineurosis and this inflammation causes thickening and contraction of the epineurosis at the ulnar side resulting in the flexion of the ring finger and the little finger. Mostly the ring finger is more commonly involved. So that's it about the palmar epineurosis. The fibrous flexor sheets of the fingers are basically connective tissues of the or the deep fascia that is in the fingers covering all the flexor tendons, the long flexor tendons.